build your AutoCAD IQ. Today we're going to be introducing some new features in AutoCAD 2017. My name is Ashley and joining me today are my colleagues Dave, uh, our presenter, Volker and Nauman, our AutoCAD expert elites. We'd like to thank everyone for taking time out of their day to be here. We're certainly very happy to have you and uh, we hope that you enjoy the webinar. Uh, so before we begin, we'd just like to um, introduce ourselves. I'll start with myself. Um, I'm a technical support specialist based out of our Boston office. Dave, our presenter, is also a technical support specialist, and he's based in our Manchester, New Hampshire office. Nauman is our AutoCAD expert elite, and he's based out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And our addition to this webinar is Volker, who is also a technical support specialist, and he's based out of our... Um, Lake Oswego, Oregon office. Uh, so before we get started, um, please feel free to leave questions um, in the chat window and we'll answer them as best we can. For answers that we don't get to in the chat window, we'll certainly address those after the webinar. Uh, this session is being recorded and the links are available in the registration reminder, the chat window, as well as the post-webinar survey. And uh, I think right now we'll go ahead and do a couple of quick polls. Uh, Dave, I'll go ahead and get those. Uh, the first one is, is this your first Autodesk webinar? So it looks like for a lot of you, this is not your first uh, webinar, so welcome back. And for those of you, if this is your first webinar, very special uh, welcome to you. Uh, the second poll that we have here is, what application do you use? All right, so it looks like most of you uh, that are joining us are using AutoCAD and also closing their AutoCAD LT, and then we have some other um, we have some other applications. So uh, some of our upcoming webinar topics, we'll go over those quickly. So we have Back to Basics, an introduction to layer management in AutoCAD 2017. That's on March 31st. Then we have Beyond the Basics, working with the Action Recorder in AutoCAD 2017. That's going to be on April 7th. Then we have the third dimension, 2D to 3D workflows in AutoCAD, and that's on April 14th. And then we have uh, tips and tricks, which are to be determined on uh, April 21st. Uh, so you can watch past webinars anytime by visiting our Autodesk YouTube channel. You can also download the data sets from Box if you'd like to follow along. You can register for the Build Your AutoCAD IQ, IQ webinar series by visiting our landing page. And please visit and encourage your peers to visit our AutoCAD community forums and share your knowledge. And if you're interested to share feedback with the AutoCAD development team, um, it's highly recommended to join the AutoCAD Customer Council where you can share your feedback and of course help influence the creation of great future releases. If you'd like to get involved, you can email us at autocad.beta at autodesk.com. And then, of course, our Autodesk Knowledge Network. Um, here you can find a lot of really great articles, uh, service packs, and hotfixes for AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. And uh, we'll get straight into our agenda for today. So um, some of the new features in AutoCAD 2017 include the Autodesk Desktop Application. Dave's going to go over a migration from a previous release, the License Manager, uh, 2D graphics changes, also some changes to the user interface, uh, center lines and center marks, um, importing PDF geometry, coordination model improvements, and uh, print studio. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Dave, and we hope everyone enjoys uh, learning about these new features. Thanks, Ashley, and thank you for that marvelous introduction. Um, so uh, today what I'm going to do is a, a little bit of live stuff and a little bit of um, some PowerPoint and, and a, a 
I guess back and forth. Uh, some of the things that uh, that are new to 2017 um, don't show up so well over a webinar type of thing, um, where you, you know the graphics isn't updating uh, very well uh, through the webinar. So um, I guess you'll have to trust me on some of this, and and uh, if if you wish to, if not, you can you know just say yeah right, and we go go along from there. Uh, I also want to mention that uh, I have had uh, been having problems with my computer over the last couple of days, where things have been acting fairly slow. So hopefully everything runs just fine. But um, if we have any performance issues, uh, I wouldn't blame AutoCAD 2017. I'd blame my computer at the at the moment. So the first thing that uh, we want to talk about. I got a, a, quite a bit of stuff to go through, and uh, I will do my best to get through it all before uh, the end of the hour. Is the uh, the new application manager, um, which uh, or the Autodesk Desktop application, uh, which replaces the application manager. So th this is actually a, a pretty cool uh, update to what is currently available out there. And uh, let's see if I can find my icon here. And of course, I, it doesn't seem like it's all installed, so I won't even show that at the moment. But what this what this shows is um, you're going to have a, a new interface for downloading any kind of updates, you know, service packs, hotfixes, etc., to any of the Autodesk products. And I don't think all Autodesk products will be using this initially, but uh, this will be working for um, all the products from 2015 through the 2017 release. You'll see that there's going to be icons on the left-hand side which will allow you to pick whichever products that you have installed. So AutoCAD, this is AutoCAD Architecture, AutoCAD Electrical, LT, AutoCAD MEP, et cetera, Navisworks, um, and so on. Oops, went too far there. Uh, and then you can simply hit the update button. And this also has a, a much better reporting system. So after you do an update, uh, you'll be able to see, you know, if everything installed properly uh, and, and be able to see what's gone on from there. Uh, if there is an update, then the update will show in the uh, systems tray uh, with the application manager icon, which you can see here in this little box. Uh, so that's what that's the, the first new thing that you're going to see. Um, well, actually, probably the first new thing you're going to see is uh, some of the <laughs> migration utilities and the license management changes that are in AutoCAD. So uh, one thing that you're going to see here, uh, and I'm not going to run it because I already have AutoCAD running, and it can only run this with uh, the uh, AutoCAD not running. But if you go to uh, All Programs, uh, Autodesk 2017, and you see I have lots of different versions of AutoCAD here, uh, Migrate Custom Settings, and you pick Migrate from a previous release, what you're going to see is a new uh, interface here, which will allow you to select which release you want to migrate from. So this is a drop-down that you can pick, and it will show uh, whichever versions of AutoCAD that you have installed. And depending on what you've changed, the various boxes here will become enabled or disabled. Um, you know, so like in this case, I didn't make any changes to line types or command aliases. So those are, are just grayed out for me. And you could select each piece or none of them or uh, just, you know, clear them. Um, and of course, uh, my favorite tool in the entire world is if things aren't working quite right, and we go back to the 2017 folder, um, you always have the reset settings to default option, which will put AutoCAD back into its out-of-the-box state. Uh, and you know, basically, you need to reapply any uh, custom settings that you had. But uh, most likely, it will fix any kind of issues that you were running with before. So, um, so you're going to see, uh, hopefully, some nice new functionality there with the uh, Migrate Custom Settings. Um, the very first thing you're going to see is probably the license manager changes. So um, one of the big differences here with the license management is that you don't need to install or enter a serial number or a product key when you first uh, install the software. Basically, you will be uh, prompted for this information when you 
launch the software for the first time. And you simply pick which type of license you want, you know, if a standalone or a network license, and it'll bring you to the same kind of interface that you've seen previously, where you can enter this, the serial number and the product code uh, and go ahead and, and run the software. Uh, one of the things that's a little bit different is uh, if I go to my um, AutoCAD sign-in here and go to Manage License, this will allow me to see what kind of a license I have. So I've got a, a not for resale version of AutoCAD 2017, um, but I could even change my license type. And I'm, I'm not going to do that because it's going to make me uh, restart AutoCAD if I do this. But I could actually change from standalone to a network license. Um, and this will also show any uh, plugins or add-ons and such that are uh, installed along with AutoCAD. So, so uh, it's going to give you a lot more uh, flexibility with how all of this works. Uh, also, um, a couple of other things here with the licensing. Uh, if you are somebody that like, works from home or something like that or, or works out of the country, uh, you can borrow a license uh, for up to six months. So you could use a, a temporary license offline without access to the license server. So uh, that, that's a, a great new uh, tool for you. And if you uh, happen to lose your network connection, um, the, the timer that starts uh, for AutoCAD doesn't actually start until you dismiss the message. So if it just goes down temporarily, you don't have to close down AutoCAD or anything. You could just wait a little bit for the uh, server to come back online. Okay. All right. Um, so we'll move on to some of the, the features and functionality aspect of the software. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is talk about uh, um, 2D graphics. And the, the very first thing I want to talk about is the uh, graphics performance um, tools. So I just right clicked on this little blue box here in the status bar and uh, went to 3D uh, config or 3D performance monitor. And uh, if you have a device that is DirectX capable and uh, you have hardware acceleration turned on, um, you're going to get some, some great new uh, benefits as far as graphics is concerned. Uh, I'm not going to even try to show like side by side because I don't think you're going to be able to see the difference with the uh, um, webinar running. But uh, one thing that, uh, that we can do here is, let's see, uh, where are you? Oops. Right over here. Okay. So if I uh, select this column here and I uh, right click on the grip and I select copy, in previous releases of AutoCAD, um, the preview here of where I'm moving the um, object to could show up as uh, kind of jagged edges and such. With line smoothing on in 2017, assuming that you have the right type of graphics cards and stuff, it should be uh, very fluid so that uh, you don't get any of those uh, types of um, of graphics anomalies that may, may have displayed in previous releases. Um, one of the, the Cooler things, I guess. I'm going to switch to a, another view here where I've got, uh, what do we got here? How come this is not displaying long beam? Dotted. Um, so if you have a, a object that is on a layer or a line, uh, layer with line type that is uh, using dots, you're going to see that the line type um, actually is much more visible than it was in previous releases. Uh, instead of just a single pixel showing up the dot, you actually have a dot that will show with the line type itself or the line width so that you see something that is uh, really graphically um, you know, presentable. Um, I'm going to change this actually from dots to the dash dot. And again, you can see that you know things are visible uh, very nicely. And what I want to show you here is um, 
you know, in normal AutoCAD, if you were to do a selection, say a race or something, and you don't actually include the line type, you don't select the, you know, or uh, select the part of the line type that's visible, you can't select it. So there's actually a new system variable, and it's called LT gap selection. Oops. Yeah. Selection. If you set this to one, and by 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 the way, the uh, default is set to zero, so it's like traditional behavior. But uh, with it set to one, if I come over and I just uh, move my cursor, I don't know how well this is showing up on the screen, but um, I can actually select a line or a line with a line type or a polyline, whatever it is, um, even if I'm not over a piece of the physical geometry. So it, it knows that there's a line going through here. And uh, that, um, actually, if you can just mute yourself um, while you're not talking, because I think I'm um, hearing you doing things in the background, but it's fine. <laughs> um, so you can actually select lines like that. Um, and if I pick on this, I want to show you one other thing here with, the, with these line types. Um, I'm going to just change this back to dotted. And I'm going to do a line from the end of here, and I'm going to say I want to go perpendicular to this other line type. And you'll see that even though there is no geometry there, right, it's just a dotted line, that it, it recognizes that, um, that there was an arc or a polyline, whatever it is, and it will allow you to snap to it. So uh, it, it's great new functionality that uh, I think will benefit a, a lot of people. Um, the other thing, let's go back over here to this hatch deck, and again, I don't know how well this is going to show up in the webinar, is that uh, when you have uh, a hatching with uh, kind of you know, tight line work and such, um, sometimes that wouldn't display too well in previous releases of AutoCAD, and now uh, with the new graphics and everything, um, you get a much better display of of this type of line work or hatching. So uh, it, it'll give you a better representation of what's happening within the, uh, within the drawing file. Okay, so I'm gonna move on and let me open up the next piece here, which is the user interface. And if Ashley's not muted, somebody else isn't, because I'm hearing somebody. Volker, maybe? <laughs> um, yeah, mine's off. I'm not really hearing any background noise. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I know who it is. I, I got it. All right, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so in, as far as uh, the user interface, um, there's a there's a number of things here that that we have done. Uh, so first of all, if I go over to my layer dialog box and go to layer states and manage layer states, um, there are a number of dialog boxes that were no weren't previously resizable and now are. So um, you can resize things like um, the layer states manager, the page setup manager, the attribute editor, uh, and the insert dialog, bo dialog box, among other things. Uh, but one of the really cool things here is uh, with the insert dialog box. And if I say that I, I want to insert a, a block, I'm going to say I want to insert this uh, HS logo. Um, so we, so it's great, right? We get this uh, logo image here and everything. But if I pick on the, the dialog box and expand it, not only does it expand the entire dialog box, but it also expands the image here. So you can see what's happening uh, or what the block looks like instead of just a little tiny image where you might not see is if this is really the right one. Um, another thing that... Uh, that is new to the insert dialog box is auto um, auto fill in or auto complete, I guess. So if I type in TI for title, right, it says, oh, there's something here called a title block. And um, it'll, you know, find whatever is there. So you don't have to do, uh, you know, a whole selection. 
Um, if you have really complex block names, you just start typing it in, and then you can start whittling your way down into the um, into the block that you're actually looking for. Um, there's a uh, also a change in the units command. So one of the new units here is US survey feet, which is kind of like a foot or feet, but a little different. Um, in the PowerPoint that I have uh, that you can download, I actually put in a link to what a US survey foot is, if anybody's interested. Uh, it's basically in, uh, instead of a, a a fraction or something it's it's something else it's very 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 close to a foot long but not quite and it's used by some surveying um, databases and such in the in the United States so uh, we now have access to US survey feet if you need that type of thing I'm hoping that I never do but uh, that's just me um, we also have a uh, a new feature here um, I'm going to go ahead and select on this title block, and if I just hit delete, normally what happens is it deletes the object, right? Um, however, there's a system variable that sometimes gets reset, especially by third-party applications, so it's called pick first, and if pick first is set to zero, and I select an object and I hit delete. Normally what would happen is nothing would happen. So what happens now, and by the way, I'm hitting the delete key. I'm not hitting erase or whatever. I'm actually hitting the delete key. Uh, what happens now is you get a dialog box that says, hey, the pick first system variable controls whether or not you can select objects before you start a command, and do you want to change that? And you can sit there and say yes which I probably would. I'd always want it to, to do that. Um, and any of those types of settings, if you haven't uh, dealt with this, it's under you. system, yeah. Under the system tab here in the options, you have hidden message settings, and you could always re-enable a particular message. If you have, say, you know, don't show this again, this is where you go back to to, to allow you to see that again if you want to. So if I said OK, and then I go over into AutoCAD and I hit Delete um, and turn Pick First off first, it would it would show me that same message again. Okay, um, tool tips. So um, I'm sure most people are familiar with tool tips, and again, this is something that uh, I'm not sh sure how well it's going to show. Um, but if I were to, let's see, what's a good one? Annotate. Yeah, probably this one, right? If you hover over a, a command in the ribbon, right, we get a, a, a tool tip that shows up. And if I can find something that uh, has a second level tool tip, let's see. Trying to remember what, which things would have a second layer tooltip. There we go. So um, after a small pause, you'll uh, end up getting you know a, a, an additional information about the object. So now inside of uh, options, if I go there and on the display tab, there is actually a new setting for the number of seconds to wait before you get a tooltip. So if you don't like tooltips to display, right, um, we can, or you want them to display right away, you can set it to zero and it'll automatically expand the tooltips and give you the, the whole thing. If you are somebody that is pretty comfortable with the software and you don't want it to display very much, you can set it to three seconds and there'll be a longer delay before you see that additional tooltip show up. So it gives you a little bit more control over um, what type of information is being displayed in the ribbon and not giving you, you know, a tooltip that's popping up right away if you're, if you're already comfortable with the software. Uh, let's go to the model tab here. And um, what I want to do is uh, show a little bit about um, some changes in hatching. So I'm going to just start the hatch command. 
Oops. Uh, ignore. And let's see what that just did. Told you I was having problems with my software or my my computer. Uh, so no. So let me see if I can. Uh, oh, this just gives me a great opportunity to talk about uh, the error reporting that's within so within the software. If you ever have problems uh, crashed using hatching in 2017. If you ever have a, a crash, it's great to send in a crash report and include the email that's um, so we can look up crash reports in the future. Um, but uh, hopefully you folks don't have the, these issues since, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm just having a problem with AutoCAD 2017 at the moment. Or not AutoCAD, but with my computer. Let me just restart AutoCAD. But uh, in, in general, what, uh, what I want to talk about here is um, with the hatch command, there's now a, a, a new setting that uh, would allow you to place hatches on a particular layer, regardless of the layer that's being set. So um, there's a, a new HP layer system variable, and uh, it, that will control what layer things are being placed on, if it's by layer or if you want it to be on a particular layer. And uh, it, um, that's something that will show up in the hatch dropdown dialog box uh, as to what, the, what layer it should be prompt, put on. And uh, you can also actually even type in a brand new layer name. Like you could say, uh, I want uh, all hatches to go on the new hatch layer. And it'll even create the layer if it doesn't exist. So uh, it's uh, some nice new uh, functionality that's available uh, within the hatching command. And once this is uh, back up and running, we'll move on to the next piece. Okay. Hopefully it's going to be up soon. Here we go. Okay. So we don't need that. And we want to go to recent. And user interface. Okay. Um, so the next thing um, that's new in 2017 is some changes to the text edit command. So we'll uh, get back in here. And let's go back to my model tab. So I can't let uh, Volker have all the awkward moments. I have to have a couple once in a while. So one of the things that's, uh, that's new here is uh, if I select on a piece of text and I go to edit, okay, and I just say I'm, I'm going to change that from a lowercase f to an uppercase f. Um, what we can do, there's a new option here for mode, which is um, you can set to multiple. So basically, I can keep on picking on different pieces of text and, uh, and updating them without restarting the text edit command each time. So it's uh, just a, a lot faster um, for being able to, to do things like that. Okay. And let me go ahead and close this one. And let's go back and let's look at uh, center lines. And uh, we're still waiting for center lines. There we go. So there's actually some, some new tools here um, on the annotate tab. 
there's uh, center lines and center marks. And uh, the center line command will start there, allows you to pick two objects, and they don't even have to be um, you know, parallel to one another. Like you can see these are at a slight angle. And it'll go ahead and add a center line for that uh, piece of geometry. Uh, do the same thing over here, and we'll just go ahead and add a center line if I can pick it. And you know, there are grips on here, so you can uh, you know, stretch things if you want them to be a little bit longer. Grab that, see if I can grab that grip. There we go. Um, so you can automatically add center lines to, to things just by selecting the geometry. Whoops, I missed. Okay, go ahead and stretch that to there. Um, and then there's also center marks. So if I grab uh, the circle, it'll go ahead and add a center mark to the circle. And if, um, these objects are automatically associated to the geometry that you're using or that you're selecting. So if I were to move that circle, oops, I missed, moved the wrong circle, <laughs> um, it, it, the, uh, the center line will automatically go along with it. Uh, to control these center lines and center marks, there's a whole list of, ce of different center line variables. So, you know, cross gap and size and association, the layer, the line type, whatever. So there's a whole bunch of things here that you can use to adjust how the center lines are displayed. I'm not going to go through each one of these things, but uh, just know that if you just type in center, the autocomplete will show you the various uh, um, system variables that control center lines. Uh, let's go to the PDF import. So uh, one thing that I, I know that I've seen a lot of is um, people asking about how to convert PDF files to AutoCAD geometry. So in this release, you can actually do that directly inside of AutoCAD. You don't need a, a third-party tool in order to convert um, PDF files into AutoCAD geometry. So if I come over here and I select on this PDF file, which is already attached, um, I'm actually going to simplify this just a little bit here. Let's get rid of some of the layers in the PDF file and just leave some line work that left on here. Um, we can say I want to import PDF information as objects, and you could uh, either you know just use a box to select things. They could say all. I can go into a, a polygon if I need to change something, but I can just select what I want. Uh, you have an option to keep the the PDF or detach it. I'm going to say I want to get rid of it. And what it just did is it just converted that PDF file into native AutoCAD objects. So uh, it's pretty cool. It works uh, really nicely for um, if you need, have the need to um, use a PDF file. Uh, obviously, uh, it's going to work best with um, a vector PDF file, probably not as well with a raster PDF file. Um, but we can also do this during the import. So if I do a PDF import and I say I want to import a file, and let's go to my webinars folder. And I want the Mount View cabin. So in this particular PDF, this is actually a multi-sheet PDF. So I've got four different sheets. I'm going to say I'm just going to select uh, you know, sheet number three. And you know, there are a bunch of different options. You know, do you want to use the layers? Um, do you want to use two type text? If there is two type text in there, do you want to import raster images, etc.? So there's uh, lots of different settings here. Uh, I'm just going to say OK. And you can see this is converting 20, almost 22,000 PDF elements into native AutoCAD geometry. Okay. And here's my new drawing file that was generated from a PDF file. So one, the one thing that uh, you, I want you to know is that um, it will only convert two type fonts to, to actual text. Uh, if you have SHX fonts in your um, 
PDF file, that's actually going to get converted as uh, individual line work. It's not going to be uh, actually text objects. So, it, for example, in this in this drawing, there's a combination of things. So, oops, zoom in here. Um, if I pick on you know the letters here in this in this text box, these are all individual pieces of geometry. It's not a it's not actually text. But if I zoom over to the title block, if I can get my mouse to behave, okay, um, the uh, objects in the title block are actually converted as M text. So uh, I think this will be a, a great new tool for people that do go from a PDF file into AutoCAD. And let's see what else. So next one on my list here is something called Design View. So let me cl close this. Share Design View. So this is a uh, basically better integration with our Autodesk 360 um, account. And I'm not going to run this all live because it uh, takes a little while to, to process. But um, if I go to, where am I going? Oh, the A360 tab. There is now something called Share Design View. So when you select this, you basically have the option to, to publish this in a browser right, right away, you know, basically um, live publishing, or publish it in the background in the cloud. Uh, so if you, know, if you say, I want to publish this in the cloud, um, so this is ba being sent to a completely secure you know, a cloud server, um, this will uh, notify you when the publish is done and give you a link that you can then pick to uh, share with somebody. So if I were to go here, um, you, uh, like I said, you have the two different options. And then uh, um, if you said uh, to notify you when it's complete, you get a little um, pop-up in your status bar that says, hey, the, the publish is now done. Do you want to view it? And if you say yes, uh, let's see. Where are you? Cancel. Thought I had this open already, um, but if you if you say I don't have it open, so I'm not going to go find it right now. Um, it'll open up. Oh, actually, I can get it from the PowerPoint because I have it right here. Uh, by the way, when I publish this PowerPoint, this particular link will be removed because I'm going to, uh, th this is only good for th um, 30 days, the link, before it, it's deleted. Um, so I don't want to publish something that's going to have a broken link. But what happens is you now have uh, your model published that to be able to um, share with uh, various people, um, and you know, it's it's you don't have to give them the drawing. You can actually mark these things up and and just view the model without uh, having the the drawing on your computer. So it's a, a great new set of tools. Let me go back to AutoCAD. So that's a design view. Um, a couple other things about this, uh, as far as the browsers are concerned, uh, it supports Chrome, Firefox, and other and any other browser that supports WebGL 3D graphics, whatever that is. Um, so uh, I would imagine that you know any of the new versions of Internet Explorer, etc., will be able to work with this. Uh, and like I said, these files would be available for up to 30 days up on the on the cloud. Um, and people do not have to be logged into A360 or have AutoCAD installed to be able to view these files that you're putting up on the cloud. Let's <clears throat> see, how am I doing on time? 2.39, okay. Uh, so next thing I want to show is a little bit about 3D graphics. So uh, I think... Um, if I'm not mistaken, everything I've shown so far is available to both AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. The next couple of things here are going to be uh, AutoCAD only because we're talking about 3D capabilities. Yeah, 
and my computer is still being slow. Hey, Ashley, you want to sing us a song while I'm waiting? I think we'd lose quite a few attendees if I did that. <laughs> This is loading a, uh, a fairly complex 3D drawing, so it's just taking a, a moment here. And again, this is going to be one of those things that uh, may or may not show up very well on a webinar since we're, we're talking about latency with the graphics and such um, being displayed, but we'll give it a try here. And hopefully this uh, shows up well. So again, I'm going to go to my model tab. And if it ever wants to go there. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start the orbit command. And uh, as I'm sitting here, and, and this is just a conceptual view, but uh, you know, this actually will, works pretty well with uh, realistic views as well. Doesn't look like I'm quite up and running yet. There we go. Just notice that there's a little guy in my in my drawing sitting there. Let me um, see if closing a couple of these other drawings is going to help. If Ashley's not going to sing, maybe Volker will tell a story. Well, I, I will. How's that? Actually, <laughs> uh, I'll talk about a system variable that might interest some and others might find sacrilegious. Uh, and that is the cursor type system variable. And basically, it is uh, set to zero as a default. But if you change it to one, it, uh, it will change your crosshairs to a regular mouse cursor. So um, for those who want that, it's it's there. Uh, for those who don't want it and see it appearing, know that there is a system variable available. <laughs> and that's a, a, another new feature for 2017, right? Correct. Yep. All right, let's give this another try here. All right, so let's go back to orbit. And actually, this is uh, kind of not displaying what I would expect it to be displaying, but uh, what you should be seeing is uh, pretty much fluid, you know, rendered geometry instead of going to the um, the sketch mode where it's uh, just kind of giving you an idea of what's happening. So uh, again, my computer is not behaving quite nicely for me today. 
let's get out of this. And uh, by the way, there are a bunch of videos um, that uh, will go over all of these things that I also have a link to in the PowerPoint. So uh, if you want to see what things are supposed to be working, looking like when things are behaving themselves, uh, take a look at some of the videos and uh, I think that you'll get a better idea of what's, what's happening here. Um, so I'm going to go to the conceptual or coordination model. So I've got two more things to cover here, coordination model and print studio. So uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with this, uh, AutoCAD uh, st started, uh, I believe, last year uh, being able to import what we call a coordination model, which would be a file coming from Navisworks, uh, so like an NWD file, and uh, added a little bit more functionality to that this year. Uh, I'm going to go to my insert, actually, I'm going to change my workspace to my 3D workspace. And I'm going to do an insert, attach, and I'm going to change this to a Navisworks file. And it's in the drawings. So I've got this uh, large Navisworks file that I'm going to import. Uh, I'm just going to accept the defaults here about uh, the zoom and scale and everything. And this will bring in a Navisworks NWD file into AutoCAD. Just waiting for it to finish loading. And I think I'll be visiting IT after my presentation. <laughs> All right. Brooke, do you have any other interesting stories? Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so this is, um, brings in my Navisworks file, and one of the new features here um, that uh, I want to show is that you can actually snap very easily to the uh, the various geometry. So, for example, if I wanted to put a box in from you know, the corner of of these walls, I can go ahead and just uh, select them, give it a, a height, say eight inches. And it'll allow me to snap right to the geometry from the Navisworks file. So uh, really nice that, that we can now have that kind of functionality working with files that really could be a combination of all kinds of different um, file formats because uh, Navis can read in all, um, lots of different uh, file formats. And one more thing here. Oh, maybe not. Apologize for the issues I've been having today. I guess we could we can always blame this on go to webinar. We don't have to blame it on uh, my computer. All right, one more thing. Let's see if we can get through the last uh, feature, which I think is probably one of the coolest things, so I don't want to miss it. So uh, AutoCAD 2017 basically now has the capability of printing directly to 3D printers. Um, it, there's a number of different devices that are available, which I will show you in a moment, I hope. Um, and there's a, a new application, a companion application, that uh, you uh, can install. It's not installed by default, but it's installed uh, free. So if I go back to my Sheet Set Manager. Uh, 
I'm going to just open up this drawing called Print Studio. And this is another fairly complex 3D model since it's all solids and such. So as I said, uh, Print Studio is not installed by default. Um, it's an option during the install. And if you uh, select the Print Studio button uh, without it installed, it'll just ask you if you want to install it. So it's, uh, it's pretty, you know, very user-friendly. So here I have this uh, beautiful little log cabin that I want to print as a 3D model. And uh, you're going to see that, uh, that this is actually a, a pretty simple process now to get something from AutoCAD to a 3D printer. So I'm going to again go back to my model tab. If I can find my mouse, there we go. I guess I could have saved a little bit of time by leaving all these drawings saved in my model, model tab instead of switching to it each time. But they look nice when they're in a sheet. All right, so here I have my uh, my low log cabin, and again, you need to be in the uh, you know the 3D workspace, right? So if you go to workspaces, you want to be set to 3D modeling in order to get to the, these tools. But on the output tool or output tab, there is a new command here called print studio. And uh, first thing is really cool is that it says, hey, do you want to learn about how to 3D print? Because 3D printing isn't as straightforward as just printing something. Um, there's a lot of criteria that has to be met in order to be able to, uh, to print something as 3D objects. So I'm just going to select my building. And it'll go ahead and launch um, Print Studio, assuming it's installed. And I said if it's not, it's going to ask you if you want to install it. But uh, if you look in the lower right-hand side, it says, you know, it's unioning selected objects. It's trying to figure out how to, um, you know, move this thing to a 3D device. And if you think this is slow, wait until you see how long it takes to actually print the thing, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure how many people have seen things being 3D printed, but it's not a fast process. But it's a whole lot faster than building a little model, um, you know, with cardboard or something like that. This was definitely working much faster than this yesterday. This, again, is problems with my computer. I blame it on GoToWebinar, Dave. Yeah, all right, it's GoToWebinar and my computer. I, I want to blame it on my computer so I can get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like it's almost there. And uh, you know, Print Studio is a uh, is a free tool, so it's uh, not something that you have to purchase. And it's basically going to allow you to. Um, import the model and do um, some checking on it instead of just trying to print something to a 3D printer and hoping that it works. It's going to actually, uh, um, you know, kind of validate the model beforehand. So I'm just going to say OK here. Here we go. 
OK. And this will launch Print Studio. Eventually. I think we need some uh, elevator hold music. I'll work on having that ready for the next webinar. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, basically, uh, here inside of Print Studio, um, you'll see that uh, you know there are a number of different uh, devices that we support out of the box. Um, Ember is a 3D printer that Autodesk makes ourselves, and then you know, MakerBot and, and several others. Um, so I'm just going to close that. And I say I want to scale this to fit within my printer, and it'll show you the model. And um, you know, it allows you to go through various things here. And uh, if I hit um, export, it, you can actually um, export a file out that you could bring to a printer, 3D printer, as opposed to just printing directly. So uh, you know, w if I had the device, I'd be able to just create my little model here without uh, you know anything else. It's just using Print Studio. So really neat. Um, I apologize for some of the problems I've been having with the computer today, but uh, hopefully that gives you a little idea of some, you know, some of the main features that were added to 2017. And if we have time for a question or two, we can go through that. And uh, I don't know what kind of questions we've had in the in the, in the window here, but. Uh, do we have anything that we want to talk about uh, during the rest of the last two minutes? Yeah, Dave, we have um, we have a couple of questions here that we weren't able to uh, to get to. So one of them is, which of the features you talked about today um, are available in AutoCAD LT? So um, as I was mentioning, I believe that LT would have everything in it other than the 3D stuff that I talked about. So it, it wouldn't certainly wouldn't have the uh, Print Studio. Um, and uh, you know the ability to bring in Navisworks files and things like that, but uh, all the other stuff should be available in LT. Uh, unless I'm wrong, Woker, if you know if, I, if there's anything. No, else. Uh, the um, basically the um, what you mentioned, the uh, object coordination model uh, changes that were made aren't going to be available, but everything else is uh, available in LT. Okay, everything you showed, so. Okay, and probably only have uh, time for one more question, so we can get the last uh, poll and and talk about the last uh, couple of things. Um, so, since you um, were going through the PDFs, um, where do you go to insert the um, the PDF again? Can you go through that, Dave, quickly? Yeah, um, just do insert attach, and then uh, you can change here to PDF files and just do a uh, insert PDF. And I'm in the 3D space, but uh, in the in the standard 2D modeling, whatever, I think, think the insert tab is like the second or third um, tab over. Or you can just type attach. And that'll allow you to do the same thing. So let's uh, go ahead and, and wrap up. Uh, so there's a couple things here real quick. Um, in the uh, additional resources, I listed uh, you know, the trial download. So if you don't have 2017 yet and you want to give it a try, you can download it. Uh, put a link to the new features, um, a link to some of the videos about the new features, um, system requirements. Um, there is an issue with the PDF import um, if you want to convert to 
into geometry. Um, basically, all you have to do is make sure that you have a full path to the PDF file. If you have a relative path, it won't work. But there's an article that talks about that. And I mentioned uh, that I put a link into what a US survey foot is. And um, the last one there is a link to all the videos that our, my colleague uh, Heidi put together um, showing a lot of these new features. So if you want to kind of step through any of those individually instead of going through the whole recording of the webinar, um, you can do that. And last couple of things will be I'll let Ashley cover. Can't hear you, Ashley. Sorry about that. I forgot to <laughs> take myself off. Um, <laughs> um, so again, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, Daisy did a really great job on the webinar. Um, we encourage everyone to give us your feedback. Um, there's a URL here. You can uh, our AutoCAD community forum, or you can email us directly at autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com. Okay. And uh, Okay. We'll go ahead and take our our, uh, our final poll today, and that is, um, did you learn something new in today's session? Uh, I was going to say that I should have stopped the th voting because it was 100% yes, but now it's only 99% <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're definitely happy All to right. hear that if people learn something new today. That means that means that. Uh, Dave did a really great job. So um, again, thank you everyone for attending the webinar and we hope that uh, you'll, you'll join us at the next one. And uh, we'll be here um, online to answer your questions uh, for another few minutes. So please feel free to send in more questions. All right, and thank you everybody for taking your time to, to watch today. Thank you.